follow along as I mount a scope on my new CVA Optima V2 muzzle loader. I'm going to show you how to mount a scope, and this can go for any rifle. It doesn't have to be a muzzle loader. Really anything with an integral scope mount. We're going to go over torque specs, eye relief, kind of the thought process behind picking a scope. You're not going to want to miss it. Check it out. And so for my CVA Optima, I'm going to be throwing on this Leopold VX Freedom 3 to 9 by 40 because I already have it. Why spend the money on a dedicated muzzleloader scope when I have a perfectly good rifle scope sitting here? I don't think you need to do it. Now real quick, let's go over the tools that you're going to need to do this. You don't need very many. So the tools you'll need to mount a scope on any of the modern one-piece scope mount designs, even two-piece designs, are, are really simple and straightforward. The only things I use are this right here, a Wheeler fat wrench. It gives you torque in inch pounds. You want this. This is, this is a godsend. A simple level, a bubble level. And me personally, I use some purple Loctite, but only use that on the base mounts, the base screws. Don't use that stuff on the ring screws. And that's it. You don't need anything fancy. If you're building some sort of a long range precision gun, yeah, you might want to get into like lapping the rings and all that jazz. I've never done that. I've got rifles that shoot sub MOA, half MOA. I didn't lap the rings. It's not a fancy scope, but the rifle's super accurate. So there's a lot of BS out there about what it takes to get an accurate rifle set up that you just don't need most of the time. Let's talk about torque settings real quick. So. The best info I was able to find online about the Duracite scope mount that comes with the CVA Optima is that you want the actual base screws that attach it to the barrel set to 25 inch pounds and you want the ring screws set to 20 inch pounds. You're going to want to look up for your specific scope base the exact torque settings. I had a lot of trouble finding that information for the Duracite mount. If you're using like a Leopold or Tally or something, you can go to those websites and they have the torque settings there. Make sure you use the factory recommended torque settings. Personally, if I can't find that information with, with a lot of bases and rings, you can't find the info. It's like they don't put it out there for some reason. I use basically the same thing that Duracite says, 25 inch pounds for the bases and then 20 inch pounds for the actual rings. All right, so I've got my scope here. One of the first things you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that the scope tube is clean. So what I do, I just take a lint-free like cotton cloth. This is from an old t-shirt that I cut. I keep these handy in my shop. And I'm just gonna ring around the scope tube, kind of scrub it like that, make sure there's no debris on there, as little dust as possible. And then I'll just blow on it with my mouth to make sure there's nothing on here. Um, you don't have to like put a solvent or anything on here. It's not that big of a deal. You just want to make sure there's nothing on here that's going to block the clamp of the ring once you, you get it on uh, the scope mount. And then you're going to want to do the same thing with the inside of your scope rings, both the top and the bottom. Wipe them down. Make sure there's nothing on there. Then one more time to recap, before you start putting your scope in the rings, make sure that your, um, your screws that actually mount the base to the rifle are torqued down properly. I have all of these torqued down to 25 inch pounds for, per the manufacturer's specs, and I did put a little bit of purple Loctite on these. All right, at this point, go ahead and set your scope down into the rings, and you're gonna wanna make sure, if it's a variable power scope, to set it to the highest magnification. I'll tell you why here in a second. All right, I've gone ahead and put the ring caps on and screwed them down, not even finger tight. So that's why I didn't really show that step. It's kind of self-explanatory. Put them on, put the screws in, and then, you know, screw your screws in until it's still nice and wobbly because we're going to want to move the scope around and make sure it's where we want it you know front to back and also torqued left and right so that the reticle inside is perfectly um, perpendicular to the rifle oh and one more thing remember no loctite on these scope ring screws only on the base screws the tension once you get these tightened down they don't really come loose in my experience. You don't want Loctite on them. If you do put Loctite on these because of the constant tension, because the rings are kind of like a springy, um, I don't know, like, sort of like a springy dynamic as they compress against the scope, it'll seize up and it's really hard to get these out if you put Loctite on them. All right, at this point, your scope is sort of loose mounted in the mount. You can still move it around. You can, here, I'll see if I can show you. You can torque it left and right like that. You can move the scope back and forth. That's what you want. 
make sure that it's on the highest magnification because that's where the eye relief is set. And what you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do at this point while you can still move the scope around is, and I think it goes without saying, I think make sure your gun's unloaded when you're doing all this. This one is. So go ahead and shoulder your rifle and you're gonna to wanna to play with the scope and get it exactly where you want it front to back so that you have a clear sight picture in there so that there's no black ring around the outside of, of your view when looking through the scope. This is setting your eye relief. So shoulder it, make sure it's comfortable as far as where your head is front to back, figure out where that is for you. And if you need to move the scope forward or back in the rings, now's the time to do that. This is actually almost perfect the way that I have it. Um, there's no black ring unless I push my head forward or pull it back. So I think I'm actually good as far as uh, front to back on the scope. I don't need to move it. So after you've done that, you want to orient the scope left and right, twist it so that that reticle inside is perfectly straight up and down and left and right. And I'll show you how to do that. So you might be asking exactly what is eye relief? Well, all eye relief is, is the correct distance per the manufacturer of the scope between the ocular lens of the scope and your eye. So for different scopes, the, the eye relief is gonna be set for different distances. For most center fire rifles and like a muzzle loader like this, you're gonna be dealing with about a three to four inch eye relief. That gives you a good gap between your eye and the scope for that recoil so it doesn't smack you in the face. Um, for a pistol scope, for example, the eye relief is going to be much, much farther, 15, 18, 24 inches even, so that when you're reaching way out in front of you with a pistol, you can still have a good clear sight picture through that scope and it's not all you know blurry and black in the ocular lens. All right, once you have the eye relief set for your scope, you've got it where you want front to back, you're going to want to go ahead and just sort of finger tighten down the screws on your scope rings to put a little bit more pressure. That way when you're playing with your scope, you know, torquing it left and right to get that uh, reticle perfect, you're not bumping your scope front and back as well, screwing up your eye relief. So tighten these down just a little bit more so that you can still torque it left and right, but it, it might not go front and back if you accidentally bump it. And at this point, get back behind your rifle. Sorry about the lighting. Lighting is set up in here facing the other direction better, but whatever, we'll deal with it. Um, get back behind your rifle and try and make it as perfect up and down as possible so that like the butt stock is perfectly straight up and down um, because that's what you're gonna orient the reticle with. All right, so this is gonna take some screwing with. I'm back behind the rifle. I've made sure the rifle is perfectly straight up and down. I'm gonna get back behind it and I'm gonna take the scope. I usually use the turrets to get torque on it with my hand and gently and slowly, I'm gonna twist the scope in the rings so that the reticle is straight up and down. Now this is gonna take a little bit of time and screwing with. It's actually harder than it looks um, if you wanna get it perfectly right. So I'm just gonna do this for a minute. I'm gonna go back and check and make sure the rifle is perfectly straight up and down. And then, this is what I have my level for. I'm gonna put the level on the top scope cap, right, like this, and then torque the whole rifle until that bubble is perfectly centered in the level. And then I'm gonna go back, look at my rifle, and see if the rifle looks oriented perfectly level. Right now the rifle looks like it's torqued a little to the right, so what I'm gonna do is twist it to the left till it looks perfectly straight. And again, this is gonna take some screwing with. I'm not gonna film the whole process. So we'll be here all day. And now the bubble is way over to the right, so I know I need to torque that scope uh, clockwise, at least from the back. All right, I feel like this needs to be said. Obviously, scope mounting can get a whole lot more complicated than what I'm showing you. What I'm showing you is how I do it with minimal tools, minimal supplies, to prove that you don't need all kinds of fancy stuff to do this. Of course, like say you go on to you know, Midway USA or Brownells or whatever, they sell all kinds of scope mounting tools. They have little bubble levels that you can attach to your barrel, to the action of your rifle. All that stuff is great, 
it's not a bad idea to get it if you want to, but what I'm trying to show you is that you don't need it. You can do this stuff with minimal tools, a little bit of elbow grease and a little bit of time, and you can get your scope mounted 99.9% .9 perfect, and for 99.9% .9 of hunters, that's totally fine. Unless you're bench rest target shooting out to a thousand yards, you really don't need to go overboard with this stuff. Okay, so I've screwed with it for a few minutes. I've got the scope exactly how I want it left to right. When I look through there, let me see if I can get it to do this. Ah, there you can kind of see the reticle in there. There we go. There we go. Ooh, I actually did it. So, you know, if you're looking through it with your eyeball, it's a whole lot clearer than trying to do it with this camera. But you kind of see what I mean. The reticle is perfectly perpendicular, at least as best as I can get, up and down, left and right compared to the level and compared to the rifle itself. So at this point, so long as you haven't bumped it forward or back and screwed up your eye relief, it's time to go ahead and tighten down your scope rings. And what you wanna do, one little thing that you wanna check, let me see if I can get it to focus. Uh, there we go. So see this scope ring here, there's a gap right there between the top and the bottom. You're gonna have a gap on both sides on both your front and back ring. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is tighten down your screws to try to keep the same, the same size gap on both sides, on your left and right side, just to get even pressure, okay? If you have a whole bunch of gap on one side and no gap on the other, it might kinda of torque your scope one way. And then you'll find that when you shoulder your rifle, you know, later on, that that reticle will be there we go. It'll be all jacked up left and right. Ah, screw that. I'm not going to try and show you that. It's too, too hard. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and torque these down. And what I do is I'll do one side of one a little bit, then the other side a little bit. We'll come back, torque this a little bit, torque this a little bit. And I just kind of keep going around like that until I hit my torque spec. Again, keeping that gap right there even on both sides. And for the final torquing down, I'm gonna be using my handy dandy, uh, the Fat Wrench by Wheeler. I highly suggest you get one of these. If there's anything you wanna to get to help you mount a scope better, it's this thing. You can adjust your torque setting in inch pounds by pulling this out and twisting it left or right, and it'll adjust the little gauge here. I've got it set to 20 inch pounds for those scope rings. Here we go. And there we have it. We've mounted the scope on the CVA Optima V2. It was pretty easy. Didn't require very many tools. It really didn't take that much time. Even me trying to film this video, which is a lot of work. It, I mean, it took me under an hour to do all this. If I wasn't filming, I could have done it in 15 minutes. Don't be daunted by mounting your own scope. You don't have to have a pro do it. If you want to take it to your local gunsmith to have them do it, that's always a good idea. That's fine. They know what they're doing but you can do it yourself with minimal tools, and then you got the satisfaction of knowing that you did it when you dropped that deer, it's even better. And I think a quick note is in order on exactly why I picked this scope to mount on this rifle. So if you just take a step back and look, I think it just looks really good. It goes with the gun, it goes with the aesthetics. The CVA Optima is a little bit more of a modern style, new age muzzleloader, and I think the aesthetics of this Leopold VX Freedom go really nicely with it. And of course, the number one reason that I picked it is because I had it on hand and I wasn't using it. Might as well use it and save some money instead of buying something else. Now, I also had this Weaver K6, this old made in Japan Weaver. I love this scope. I had it mounted on a slug gun for a while. And it was really a choice between this scope and that scope. And it really came down to aesthetics. I think the Leopold um, just looks better on this rifle. And to me, that's kind of a big deal. It makes a lot, a lot of difference when you're out hunting if your setup just, just flows and looks good and feels good and you like it. So there you have it, the quick and easy, the down and dirty of how to mount a scope to a rifle. In this case, it was a muzzleloader. The rules and the steps are all the same for a centerfire, rimfire, shotgun, it really doesn't matter. It's all the same, the same basic tools and rules apply. 
I'm sure I'm going to get some hate for not lapping the rings or making sure the rifle is oriented to the axis of the earth and the, you know, orbit of the stars. And I can't believe the level that some people go to this stuff when all they're going to do is go shoot a deer at 100 yards. That's all I'm saying. I've mounted a lot of scopes to a lot of rifles, never had any issues. You can make it as complicated or as simple as you want. What I'm trying to show you is the simple way. I hope you liked it. Let me know what you thought. Stay tuned for more videos.